Hello, and welcome to our new short video series, Spartan Stories, Tales from UNC Greensboro's University Archives. I'm Erin Laramore, your University Archivist, and I'm going to introduce you to some people, events, and other stories from UNCG's history, stories you might not know or that you might have forgotten. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Lula Martin McKeever. You may know her husband, Charles McKeever. He was UNC Greensboro's founding president, and he's the guy who was uh, memorialized with a statue in front of Jackson Library. But Lula Martin McKeever was a force in her own right, a staunch advocate for women's education in an era long before women had the right to vote. The fight for women's education is one that Lula Martin McKeever started as a young girl, developed further with her husband Charles, and continued until her death. Lula was born Lula Verlinda Martin in Salem, North Carolina on June 8, 1864 to Dr. Samuel Martin, a dentist, and Verlinda Miller Martin, who had actually graduated with honors from Edgeworth Seminary in Greensboro. Young Lula grew up surrounded by books and scientific instruments and dreamed of becoming a physician one day. But in the 19th century, the path for women wishing to become medical doctors was almost non-existent. She attended the prestigious Salem Academy, graduating in 1881. Ultimately, however, she chose to pursue a career as a teacher over her dreams of becoming a physician. She began her career teaching in a one-room private school and later in the Oxford Orphanage. Four years after beginning her teaching career, Lula met a fellow teacher named Charles Duncan McKeever. In 1885, the couple married. Lula, however, retained her strong sense of independence and her belief that, quote, a woman was an individual with a right to her own mind, her own property, and her own privileges. Lula actually refused to wear a wedding ring because she believed it to be a symbol of the oppression of women. Around the time of their marriage, Charles became heavily involved in local teachers' institutes, which sought to provide professional training for educators throughout North Carolina. At the time, the state had no formal system for training its teachers, and funding for public schools was sparse. Lula was an essential part of the Institute's success, doing everything from practice teaching demonstrations to scrubbing and cleaning the local courthouses that were used as training sites. Most of the teachers' institutes took place during the summer months when the public schools were not in session. During the academic year, beginning in 1886, the McKeevers both taught at Peace Institute in Raleigh. Lula also briefly held the position of lady principal at the Charlotte Female Institute, now Queen's University. During this time, Charles also contemplated leaving education for a career as a lawyer, a decision he ultimately abandoned. But Lula joined him in studying the law because she said, quote, her mind needed the constant stimulation of study and learning. In fact, Charles often told a story of coming home to find Lula completely absorbed, lying across the bed with her chin in her hands, reading the legal rights of married women in England. During her time in Charlotte, Lula actually did study also with Dr. Annie Laurie Alexander, the first North Carolina woman to become a physician and practice in the state. In 1892, the McKeevers moved to Greensboro after Charles was named president of the newly established State Normal and Industrial School, now UNCG. As the campus's first lady, Lula took on numerous responsibilities. She took charge of selecting furnishings for the sole dormitory on campus at the time and attended to much of the campus landscaping and beautification projects. She was also responsible for advocating for the hiring of Dr. Miriam Bidding as the campus's first physician, insisting at a woman's college that they needed a female medical doctor to be in charge of the health of the students. Also on the frequent occasions when Charles was away from the campus, Lula stepped in to handle much of the school's business. She would give a quiz for a civics class or monitor the campus coal supply or advise the campus physician about a threatening measles out outbreak. She frequently served as a host for guests waiting to meet with Charles, and she often served as a mother figure for many of the students. Lula also became a staunch advocate for the increased state support for education in North Carolina. She was a founding member of the Women's Betterment Association, which specifically worked for improving facilities for public schools across the state. Lula assisted county leaders throughout the state and at one time served as a field director. 
Only four years after the creation of the Women's Betterment Association, 1,133 new school buildings were constructed in rural areas across North Carolina at a cost of nearly half a million dollars. The total value of the entirety of public school property across the state almost doubled in that short four-year period. Unfortunately, Charles McKeever died in September of 1906, but Lula and her four children remained in the McKeever house on the state normal campus. The two oldest McKeever children, Annie and Charlie, were among the 10 students enrolled in the first practice school on the state normal campus. Annie went on to graduate from state normal in 1905. Their youngest daughter, who was also named Lula, was a member of the class of 1921 at the institute her parents founded. Charles Jr. graduated from his father's alma mater, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, in 1909. A fourth child, Verlinda, died at a young age in 1908. Lula continued to be an active presence on campus and remained a strong advocate on a number of social causes, including the YWCA, Sunday schools, the Community Art Association, and educational institutions for both white and African-American students across the state. Lula suffered a broken hip in 1930 and was wheelchair bound, limiting her ability to be as active as she had been before. But she still attended the annual Founders Day ceremony on campus every October. On December 22, 1944, Lula Martin McKeever passed away at age 80. At the Founders Day service the following October, college president Walter Clinton Jackson noted that, quote, Death last December broke Mrs. McKeever's long connection with this college, but death cannot remove her benevolent spirit from this campus, nor can it stop the force which she, working with and through her husband, started for the advancement of educational opportunities for women in North Carolina. That year, students placed wreaths on both the graves of Charles and Lula McKeever as part of the Founders Day ceremony conscious of the fact that Dr. McKeever himself would feel that this was indeed a just and proper recognition of one who may rightfully be called the co-founder of the college. I hope you enjoyed this Spartan story. You can find lots more on our Spartan Stories blog. Visit uncghistory.blogspot.com.